everybody, Spiffy Neil Geeks here, and for our first uh, Friday podcast, I guess, you know. So, naturally, we're going to talk about E3, because that happened this week. E3! It's that time of the year again. Yup. <laughs> yep, so, we're just going to do, uh, like, we're not going to do, like, separate videos or anything, just kind of talking about each individual conference. We're just going to generally just chat and talk about... The whole thing in general, you know, what we liked, what we didn't like, you know, that kind of crap. Yeah. So, okay. the, so the first conference that happened on day one of E3 was a conference by Bethesda. What the hell is Bethesda? Uh, it's, 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 it's the same people that uh, brought you games such as Fallout and a Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. yeah, these are the Elder Scroll guys. Yeah. Although- I, I, I didn't watch this conference. So. Well, well, I imagine BJ because that's a company you're not, you don't really follow or anything. I know as far as Elder Scrolls go, they're they're really focused on Elder Scrolls Online, which I don't really know because I haven't played it yet. But I, but there was another game that I, well, two games technically. Like there was one game that a lot of people got excited for, and that was Fallout Four. Yes. Oh yeah. I have still yet to play the Fallout series. I hear they're really good, but I've still yet to do it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. Like, I've never played Fallout. I've only heard of it. Yeah, my friend my friend uh, Justin, uh, he is a huge Fallout fan. In fact, he, he loves games like Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. I'm actually it, laughing because, like, uh, last night a, f- a friend of my sister's came by and he asked me if I saw the new Fallout trailer and what I thought of it. I told him, well, I didn't really watch it. I'm not, I'm not really into Fallout. And he just gave me the biggest look of disgust. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, he was, ran that, into... was, that was kind of the thing. Like, you know, of course, E3, you know, all these press conferences and shit were happening while I'm at work. So when I'm going on my lunch breaks, I'm checking up on Twitter. So, of course, the first thing I'm seeing on Twitter on day one is everyone geeking out over Fallout 4. Yeah. So it's like, well, that looks like this is a thing. Hmm. But um, the other game that I'm personally really excited about because I really enjoyed the first game and I'm really happy to see that they're going to continue it, and that's Dishonored 2. Oh, they're making I a don't second know what one. that is either. Uh, oh, they're making a second Dishonored? <laughs> yeah, they're making uh, yep, a sequel. Yep. Okay. Second Dishonored. Okay. Yeah, like, I kind of had to miss out on the Bethesda co- uh, conference too, so I didn't get to catch up on what was going on there, but that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, this is going to be a new setting, new characters and everything, so I mean, uh, what you call it, this is, we're not going to be doing, um, it's, I mean, it's going to loosely follow the first game, but not really, I mean, it's like, I don't know, like, I didn't get a chance to actually see the trailer yet or anything, I've just been seeing some of the screenshots, and I mean, it does look like, you know, it does look uh, like they are following the similar style and everything from um, Dishonored. I'm not sure, though, if... Because um, Dishonored is another one of those games where, depending on how you play, you get a different ending. So I don't, I can't really tell if this is following one of the endings. It's like, okay, is one of the endings going to be considered canon now? Right. So that's like, I, I don't know. But I guess, you know, we'll figure that out when the game comes out. So there was Dishonored 2, Fallout 4, Skyrim Online, and apparently another Doom game. That's still a thing? Doom is still happening? Yeah, I'm it's sure still, it's still... happy about that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I never, I mean, I never played any of the Doom games, but I remember seeing, uh, like, a, like, a live uh, demo of the game, and... I could, uh, judging by the audience's reactions to how uh, the protagonist you play as, like, murders all these demons in the most amazing ways possible, it's like, holy crap, they were loving what they saw. And quite frankly, I would not mind giving that game a shot. Hmm. It's like, I've seen Doom. It's just, Doom is just something, when, whenever I hear Doom, I think of, like, way back in the day. Like, there might have been other Doom games, like, past that just none of which that I've been keeping up with other than the classic Doom series, so... Yeah, all I... Yeah, the only ones I'm kind of familiar with are just, like, the three uh, classic ones that are that consist of, like, the, like sprites and all that jazz. Right, right. Uh, that's exactly what I'm referring to. Right. Also, also... Oh, I guess apparently also with Fallout 4, apparently they're also making, like, a real uh, Pip-Boy. 
which is so, I, apparently, a Pip Boy apparently is like this huge device that uh, the main protagonist wears on his wrist, like a watch. Oh right, yeah. And and, appa- and apparently they're making an app for the game so that you'll be able to you use the app like as if you're using a Pip Boy in real life. Oh yeah, they did say that. Okay, I thought that was actually kind of cool, like like an app that you can like put on your like uh, tablet or on your phone. Yeah, although although I think if you were to use just your phone, it would probably look weird as all hell. Because you're just using the phone. Right. You probably end up having to get, like, I don't know, the limited edition of the game in order to get the Pip-Boy, and then, then you re- the experience would really kick in. I guess. <laughs> but yeah, that was Bethesda. Now, um, the, I believe the next conference after that was... Oh, yeah, the... Uh, the Microsoft, the, I think. The, the, X- the Xbox conference. Right. Or as yeah, I called so, it the yeah. time where I was asleep. Yeah, so yeah, Ryan, I think this one balls in your court on this one because you're the big Xbox guy out of all of us. <laughs> I, mean, I, I I wasn't I was watching the Xbox conference as well, and they actually... no, no, but Ryan's like the biggest Xbox guy out of yeah, all of us. So yeah, it's yeah. like I imagine this was the conference he was the most excited for. Well, I mean, for those who don't know, I mean, it's like okay, don't get all right. Look, I I just like video games in general, regardless of the company. I just want to play the damn games. But yeah, yeah, you are not wrong. Out of the the four of us here, I'm the one who played the most Xbox. Right. So, that having been said, well, for starter, well, for starters, um, so, and so, this honestly surprised me a lot. They, they actually thought, they actually went right ahead and started off, um, the Xbox conference with Halo 5, of all things, which, it, which is weird because in the past, they would save, like, something Halo-related for later on during the conference, which I thought they were going to do the same thing this year. Like, in case if, like, one moment during the con, I mean, the, the conference and things were slowly starting to go downhill with, a, with like, 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 say, uh, titles that were going to be boring as all hell. It's like, okay, people are getting bored. Let's bring in the big guns. Bam! There's Halo. But, no, they started off right off the bat with Halo 5, but the good thing about it is that in years past, we've been get like, Halo fans like myself, we've been getting nothing but, like, cinematic trailers and all that, and, um, not really much, um, well, okay, well, I would say, I would say we haven't been getting much gameplay, but then again, we had the uh, Halo 5 Guardians beta earlier this year, but this time around, we actually got a live demo of, um, one of the like one part of the campaign in Halo Five, more specifically through uh, the perspective of a new character in Halo Five, a uh, Spartan Lock, and uh, and hit and his uh, squad team or whatnot. But holy crap! From what I saw, it looks amazing. Hmm. Didn't they announce Halo Five last year as well? Yeah, they did. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they showed a they showed a teaser for it. I believe it was um. Well, actually, I don't remember if it was 2013 or 14, but yeah, it was a teaser where it was like some uh, person who wearing like a brown hood was walking around the desert. This huge uh, uh, cybernetic uh, being comes out of nowhere, and then and then uh, the hit, the guy's hood comes off, and it turns out to be Master Chief. So yeah, this game has been in development for a while. It's just now we're finally starting to see like a lot of we're starting to see a lot of the progress and some demos for it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I I mean, the game is gonna be coming out in October of this year, so. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. so we still need a little time. Right? Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, it's like I've been keeping my eyes on the Halo Five multiplayer beta, and it's like it really does look interesting. Like I obviously can't judge a game as by interesting as your generic basic. First person shooter. Well, game. well, well. Um, I say, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say, say that. Yeah, I say this because, like, me on a personal level, I do prefer Halo over something. Say the Call of Duty series. I do. Prefer yeah, Halo because yeah, because compared to say something like Call of Duty, BJ, the Halo Halo multiplayer always brings something new to the table. Like, like with, well, good, like, like, well, like, well, mostly because they they they, they are they're able to expand they're able to expand their imaginations a little larger because this is, this is a more futuristic city with aliens and shit like so it's easy, it's easier for them to use their imagination. <laughs> well, right, well, right. Clearly, BJ does not give a shit about first person shooters. <laughs> no, unless your name is Team Fortress Two. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was gonna be unless if it was Samus. I've never played Metroid Prime. Yeah, I've never. Oh. Yeah, neither have I. 
Uh, anyway, so besides Halo, what else was there at, at Microsoft? Uh, apparently, there? apparently, there's this new game called uh, Recore. We only got a cinematic trailer of it, but the premise of it, eh, it was relatively interesting. Apparently, there was this, uh, it starts off with the girl walking through the desert with her, uh, with her uh, cyber dog, which I honestly, which I instantly thought, uh, Borderlands, for whatever reason. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I did get a Borderlands vibe from it. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Just, th- that alone sounds like something you would expect out of Borderlands. Then again, Borderlands does feature a diamond pony named Butt Stallion. <laughs> 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 yeah, but but apparently it's like uh, the girl and the dog get ambushed by other creatures, and the dog saves the girl, but he gets destroyed in the process. Process, except for uh, the uh, blue orb that I, I guess was in, like was part of the dog. But for but but ironically enough, there was an abandoned robot sitting in this cave, and when the girl put the orb into the robot, I, I guess the. Sp- Spirit of the dog took control of the robot, which is odd because the dog was already a robot. So I, I don't know. T- I don't know. F- te- technology. The interesting though thing though that I'm finding, like as I'm looking this up right now, um, Recore. It's actually a collaboration between um, Retro Developers, the studio behind Metroid Prime, and Keiji Inafune, the creator of Mega Man. Well then, really? Yeah. Okay. So you got Metroid Prime and the Mega Man guy collaborating to make this game. I was like, oh yeah, speaking of Metroid Prime. <laughs> yeah, so that might be why, like, you know, if some things, like, feel a little bit familiar with, like, the robots and everything, that's probably why. Ah. Okay. <laughs> that, it all comes together. All right. Well, after Recore, they they apparently they got into detail about this new Xbox One Elite controller. Not much to say about that, except uh, I guess this newer controller has like a a better interface. Uh, they've improved the thumbsticks and a lot and like a lot of other features regarding the controller. I guess mostly to enhance like precision when it comes to gaming. Like I guess. Especially if you're like a, I don't know, like someone who's into a first person shooter and want to have like really precise controls. Oh, or, yeah. Or, 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 better yet, I can only imagine this will also satisfy a lot of PC gamers who have to also have precise controls. Right. So, like with, with the replaceable thumbsticks. And like not only that, but I believe this new controller also has custom button mapping. I, yeah, I believe so, yes. So yeah. would you say? So would you say this would be a controller uh, that looks like it's worth investing in? Well, I, I mean, I guess if I, I mean personally for me, I'm perfectly okay with the controller I have. I've had no problems with it, even from the many times I played like a online multiplayer with the Halo Master Chief Collection. But if it all comes down to it, and I do feel like at one point, okay, I could use a better control with this, then yeah, I may invest into it, but. Honestly, I I don't think it's all that worth it. I mean, don't get me wrong. The improvements look great and all that, but honestly, for someone like myself at this point, I don't see myself investing in a new controller. Uh, I, I love how people say that this is the controller that's going to put modders out of business. <laughs> no, modders will just find a way to mod the controller. Well, speak... Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, speaking of mods, I guess apparently, um, I guess uh, Fallout Four mods are gonna be compatible with Xbox One, so there's more PC goodness, I guess. Oh yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, if it, I don't think, if I, if I, I think someone mentioned that uh, it wasn't just gonna be like Fallout Four mods; it's also gonna be like PC mods from various other PC games in general. Ah, uh, okay. Which I honestly did expect for Microsoft to go ahead and do, because I thought that consoles would just ha- just be stick to just nothing but console stuff. I didn't think they would act- actually add PC features into the whole thing. Uh, so I was like, so I guess that also made PC gamers really happy. Yeah, that's true. Speaking of, all right, oh, and also speaking of like new uh, features and uh, software, I guess. Oh my god. Oh are, oh, are we getting into the new piece of software that they're adding to their array of uh, Microsoft collections? Um, well, I, actually, I was going to go into more of the uh, the fact that they're finally adding backwards compatibility with Xbox 360 games oh, and yeah. the Xbox One. Yeah, that was probably the biggest thing about Microsoft that made oh, me really so happy. So they actually realized that was a good idea? Yeah, yes. Yes. 
I was like, well, it's about damn time. Why did you do this two years ago? I never understood why, you know, some of these companies are feeling like the whole backwards compatibility thing, you know, should be just completely done away with. I mean, I get where we're coming from as far as, like, virtual stores and stuff, because you can buy older games and stuff, but... At the same time, it's just like, you know, not everybody invests in those titles and everything, and not everybody's going to be so quick to abandon, you know, their older systems if you're going to take away the backwards compatibility. Right. Yeah, I know. That's one thing I never got either. But but regardless, it's happening. And although the downside with the whole backwards compatibility with the Xbox One Apparently, it's not going to cover every 360 title, but honestly, at this point, I'd rather have some backwards compatibility than no backwards compatibility. Wait, did they really say that's not going to cover every single Xbox 360 title? Uh, yeah, I, I guess apparently it's only it's going to be limited. So that so that being said, as far as uh, getting the backwards compatibility, does that mean they're pretty much going to have to um, release like a whole new wave of Xbox Ones I, I in order in order to do that? So I mean, that's like if you want the backwards compatibility, you have to buy a whole new Xbox One. Uh, that's no, what I, I that, think... that's what I thought too. But I guess apparently, um, I guess uh, late like in the holiday of this year or something like that, they are going to release an update where. You, you, especially if you're already an Xbox One owner, once you download this update, yeah, you your Xbox One will be able to play certain 360 games. Right, so you don't have to shell out like extra money for an entirely new system, since this is an update that they're going to apply later this year. Okay. <laughs> so there's that. Now, um, apparently, and, and okay, and I'm surprised they showed this, even though this wasn't technically the uh, EA conference, but apparently they decided to show off the uh, EA Access Vault. Oh, right, yeah. I did hear I about that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't pay attention too much to that, because I honestly didn't give a shit, but I guess it's some, I, I and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's like some kind of a subscription service where you get to play various EA games like for free like um at any time without buying a copy or anything like a vast playlist of everything EA games like I don't know Madden God knows how many other sports games they have a Titanfall Dragon Age Inquisition that sort of thing yeah it's it's like it's pretty much like if you're a gold member of Microsoft or on Xbox then yeah you have access to it I mean I don't know if it's necessarily a pay to get in kind of subscription it's like if you're already a gold member then yeah that's that's pretty much your access right there well well actually i think i remember the the guy who was talking about it it said um or i mean or then again i could be thinking of something they said at the sony conference but i think it, if, if you're a gold member you'll you'll be charged for like a subscription but it's at a discounted price um no, but but, I... then, but but then again i could be thinking of something that was mentioned Oh, wait, you know what? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was thinking of the Sony conference. It, it was another subscription ordeal, but we'll get to that once we get to the Sony conference. Okay. Bye, man. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was about to say, it's like, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> like, gold members getting for free. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're probably right. Actually, I, I don't remember them talking about anything about, like, a discounted price or anything like that. Right. Oh, but there was, however, a, a, a new Tomb Raider game. <laughs> Oh right! Yeah, uh, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's gonna that's unfortunately an Xbox exclusive. You know, that's a disappointment on my end because is it? I, yeah, this is this is Xbox only as far as I'm aware of. It's gonna be it's gonna be on PlayStation, I think. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't think so. Is it weird? Is it weird and also disappointing that I have never played a Tomb Raider yeah, game in my life? Yeah. Yeah, Rise either, either of yeah Rise I. yeah Rise of the Tomb Raider is an Xbox exclusive, so huh. yeah, Xbox is only getting this one. And like I said, that's a, that's a pretty di big disappointment because I actually liked the uh, the new Tomb Raider game that came out. So oh, I was like, oh, hey, yeah. it got a sequel. Damn it, it's on a console. I'm not gonna have. It, is it a sequel? Because I thought it was gonna be more the yes. lines of a prequel. Says it was the Rise of Tomb Raider. No, this is a sequel. Hmm. Kind of misleading title there, Crystal Dynamic. What the hell? 
All right, but 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 anyway, yeah, I think they sh they showed like a live demo of uh, Rise of Two like Two Raider. What once again, just like in the previous game. Oh my God! Inter inter the interactive controls with certain uh, situations and all of that. Look, it just made the demo and the gameplay itself look really intense. I can probably say pretty even more more intense, if not just as much as uh, the previous game. Yeah, this is where you lose me for a second, just because I know nothing about Team Raider. No, oh, oh, but dude, you should. Well, at one point or another, you should at least try uh, the the last two Raider game. I, I mean, I I mean, I'd like to just because I I keep hearing about how well received this game is. But ever since, like, way back to the first game of Tomb Raider, I've never played any of them. Like, it's kind of like Metroid for me. And I'm not. And again, this isn't to say that Metroid is a bad game, not by any stretch of the word. Just it's just a series you just, that you just never got around to nope. it. Nope. Yeah. Exactly. I ne never, never got into any Metroid games. Never got into any Tomb Raider games. So it's like I honestly don't know how to feel about it. The only Tomb Raider game I've ever, ever played was actually a Tomb Raider game that my that uh, my ex girlfriend played. Um, I know. Uh, eh. Well, you, you already know more than me. Well, do you remember which one it was? Because Tomb Raider, like the first like four, arguably five games were like you know the, I guess you can consider the classic series. And then every game, and then every game that came out afterwards was pretty much crap until this last one. It was on the 360. Okay, it must have been one of the crappy ones then. All right, and then came Fable Legends, a series I thought already died. To be honest, <laughs> are, are you are you kidding? Are you kidding? You they are never gonna kill Fable. So yeah, F so yeah, Fable Legends. Apparently, that's coming out on the Xbox One. And oh wait, <laughs> oh, well then, in that case, the fucking Rare Replay Collection. <laughs> oh right, Rare's coming back. Ah, well, okay, okay. Well, I, well, wait, yeah, Rare's I, well, I, back? Uh, Brandon, I wouldn't say they're coming back per se, because I think they kind of already did that when Play Tectonic Games was formed, and how they're making ukulele. <laughs> oh, well, mm, that's. Uh, it's 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 weird how to go about that, but 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 even so, it's like Microsoft did, did something. Not every I can only imagine not everyone was hoping, but it's close enough. You know, people. You know, normally people would expect like I don't know a new uh, Banjo Kazooie game or a, a Conker's Bad Fur Day game, but no, not exactly. Apparently. Microsoft is making this Rare Replay Collection, where it pretty much has 30 classic Rare games from the good old days, all put in one disc, and apparently 10,000 gamer score for those who are interested. So yeah, so yeah, you get to play, or or better, or better yet, for fans in the past, uh, relive many memorable games such as I don't know, Banjo Kazooie, Conquer, Killer Instinct, Battle Toads. Perfect Dark, those games, which I which which I honestly excited for, especially seeing as how I, I I have seen multiple times um, from various playthroughs of Conquer's Bad Fur Day, and I have never tried my hands at like the classic Killer Instinct or Battle Toads or even Perfect Dark for that matter, or probably many probably uh, many other uh, rare games that were developed like years ago. So, the fact that I'm able to actually try my hands at the various rare games on the Xbox One is like, okay, I'm all for it. Yeah, I am too. I mean, some of the rare games I am really familiar with, but some I am not. And it's like, I don't want to, again, not to say that these games are bad, but when these games were around, they just never caught my interest. But if they're all going to be together for like one collection, then I guess it wouldn't hurt for me to give them a try as well. If you say they're bad, Russell, you're going to get fucking crucified. You're well, I'm not saying they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I obviously can't judge games that I haven't played. I I know I know you're not saying they're bad. I'm just saying if you did say they were bad. I mean, I mean, I mean Hypo like, hypothetically speaking. I mean, like games like Perfect Dark. Like that's just a game I know nothing about. So next conference, Ugh, EA Sports 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 Sports. 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 Yeah. Uh... Sports, sports, cars, and Mirror's Edge. There you go. No. <laughs> ba no Mass you're, Effect. No, but, yeah, you're missing, like, the one thing people actually do give a shit about when it comes to EA. <laughs> oh, right. We have, 
Yeah, the new Mass Effect game. We finally have a fucking title for it. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> yeah, so this new one, it's going to be called Mass Effect Andromeda, and it has been confirmed it is taking place, like, generations after Mass Effect 3. So, and it's going to be in a new galaxy. So, new characters, new locations, practically everything is new. The one thing, though, and this is, this is at least my opinion, I was a little bit disappointed when I heard this, you can only play a human. Only human? With all, only human. You can pick male or female, but you can still only play human. And it's like, you, it's just like, ah, oh, dang, I was really hoping that I'd be able to play like a Quarian or a Krogan or something. Because it's like Mass Effect, like, that's one of the things that we just loved about the Mass Effect series was the various space races. They're all really unique and cool, and they all had their own little quirks about them. And it's like, oh, I would have loved to have been able to play as, like, a different race. But nope, we're still the measly little humans. Hmm. Of, course, now I get, of course, now I guess the question is, okay, if this is taking place after Mass Effect 3, all right, which one of the endings is canon? <laughs> you know, one of the three endings uh, yeah, I was gonna, that pissed everybody say, well, this off, Mass which is the one that's going to matter. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, yeah, which one's going to matter? You know, I guess, you know, yeah, well, if, you know, unless they just, like, you know, we start seeing more information on that relatively soon, you know, because they really didn't show which one, like, which ending or anything. Because, I mean, some of them would be, like, a dead giveaway. I mean, if you start seeing, like, okay, you're a human character, but if you start seeing, like, there's, like, biotic stuff going on and everything, then you know they're following the green ending. Right. So, I mean, it's like, you know, there's going to be some things that are going to be a dead giveaway, which is probably why they're keeping it low-key, because, because this is the shit that got everyone angry with Mass Effect 3. <laughs> Oh, yeah, good times, good times. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I do remember them saying that they were they were working on um, another Mass Effect game after 3 came out, and it's just we had heard nothing about it until now. So now we know it's in the works, and I think they said that they're planning for a, um, a holiday release for next year. Right. So we still have a ways to go before we get to it. But that's pretty much the only thing that I think from the EA conference that anyone really honestly gives a shit about is, oh, new Mass Effect. <laughs> I, did, I did wonder, like, as soon as I saw that Mass Effect was getting a new game, how you were going to feel about this whole thing. I mean, and, you know, all they showed was, like, a little teaser trailer. They haven't shown off any of the gameplay or anything, so, I mean, I still need to see, you know, all right, what do you have in store? But it's like, you know... Again, it's just going to be one of those things like, we're just going to have to wait. This is just pretty much the announcement trailer. And as for, like, things that people didn't care about with E3, I know I don't, but I know a lot of people cared about that new Mirror's Edge game. I've never played the original Mirror's Edge. Right. I, I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been wanting to try the first Mirror's Edge game. Like, uh, because, because I don't know why, for whatever reason, a first-person parkour kind of game... That seems like a relatively interesting concept, honestly. I mean, no, I mean, normally in a first person, in a first person like game, you end up having like some kind of weapon or a gun, but nope, you just have to use your freaking um, aer aerobics. How the hell you say that word? No, nah, you're just running up on walls, jumping over buildings just to get away from danger, or kicking people's asses. Anyway, Ubisoft. <laughs> oh wait, never mind, Sony. Uh, well, no, actually, no, no, no there is yeah. some things to talk about with Ubisoft. Yeah, damn yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, you know, sorry, BJ. No, no, you know. more shit I don't care about. Shut up. South Park, Sink of Truth. No, yeah, not, not South Park, Sink of Truth. One... South Park, the broken but still together. Most, yeah, most that, title... one, that one honestly surprised me. I mean, I loved the Stick of Truth, but I honestly was not expecting it to get a sequel. Me neither. That's, so that, what made that, it, that that's what made it the best start for the conference for me. Yeah. I've pretty much lost all, you know, all uh, interest in South Park. I, I, I just find it to be a shitty show at this, at this point. I still love it. <laughs> but that's where it's like, you know, 
But yeah, I was not expecting it to get a sequel. And it's like the big thing is, you know, the stick of truth, you know, it was like, you know, it was an RPG, but it was also a massive parody of RPG tropes. This time around, it's superheroes. So now I'm really curious as to what the hell you're going to do here. I mean, they did some really funny superhero parodies on the show. So I'm really curious as to what they're going to do in the game. They're bringing back the coon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Coon and friends. They're yeah. bringing them all back. So, and, and the new kid. New kid is still going to be here. Thank God. <laughs> so, I don't, I, yeah, so it's like, you know, I don't know how they're going to, what they're going to do with new kid, you know, considering, like, everything with new kid was, you know, kind of specific to Stick of Truth. So, it's like, if, but then again, it's like, you know, I guess it depends, like, you know, if this is going to be the same new kid, or is this a different new kid? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say, honestly. Yeah, but regardless, you know, I was like, yeah, I was pretty happy about that one. Now I'm just waiting for all of the Marvel and DC Comics jokes they're gonna throw in this game. Because <laughs> it's mm -hmm. superhero themed. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's like, um... And obviously, because this is Ubisoft we're talking about, of course they're gonna be talking about the new Assassin's Creed. I will give them credit, they finally learned how to animate kitties. We've, so the next, the next game in the series is Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and I don't know, I mean, it's like, uh, from my understanding, I've only played, like, the first three Assassin's Creeds, like, one, two, and, uh, Brotherhood, and one I thought was alright, I really loved two, Brotherhood annoyed me to no end, that, I mean, I dropped it after two hours. <laughs> Yeah. And but and it's like you know I heard three was kind of a letdown. I heard a lot of really good things about four. So it's like you know Assassin's Creed has just kind of become one of those series where it's like, you know sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. So I'll, I guess maybe err on the side of caution. I mean if it looks good to you, then cool. Otherwise, I guess maybe just wait for some reviews or something. I mean that's just. That's just the state of what the Assassin's Creed series has become ever since Ubisoft decided, you know, all right, we are going to pump so many of these games out, try to get one out, like, practically every year, and just ra and try and rake in all the cash, and that's probably why the Assassin's Creed series has suffered as of late. Yeah, I just don't see how they're able to add on to the, all to the, the existing story of Assassin's Creed with all these games, considering that they've already covered so much from previous games yeah well that they'll they'll throw macgyver away in <laughs> probably <laughs> well yeah they have english speaking blokes and assassins so there you go i mean okay god yeah what other time periods are they gonna use for the next 700 games like i said there's a lot of time periods to cover they will they will find some to go into Oh god, oh god, that's you know they're gonna add Assassin's Creed into modern days, like the nineteen twenties or some shit. What? <laughs> that, that actually would be awesome. But then again, it's like well, I say it would be awesome, but when I'm thinking Assassins in the nineteen twenties, I'm thinking Bacano. And having a Bacano video game would be fucking brilliant. I can only imagine it to, instead of like Assassin's like Etsy or what, that we're gonna be bringing in the Godfather. <laughs> It's like, fuck that. I just want a video game where I can play as Lad Rousseau just blowing everybody away. Uh. <laughs> I would totally play that game. <laughs> Anybody who has ever seen that anime, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And don't lie, you would play the hell out of that too. <laughs> also, also, regarding with the Ubisoft conference, another thing I'm kind of disappointed about... Okay... Yes, they are making Just Dance 2016. Do you actually keep up with that series? Well, I do. <laughs> God damn! I think you're like the only one that does. Well, all right, all right. Look, if I would if I would actually go so far as to exercise and lose this huge ass belly that I have, I gotta make exercise fun somehow. <laughs> 
I mean, I, I enjoyed the songs and dances they have for Just Dance 4. I liked what they had in Just Dance 2014. And I was liking what I seen from various videos I had seen of Just Dance 2015. But honestly, I was thinking the, the what they showed for Just Dance 2016 was lacking. Because did, we didn't get like a preview of like, okay, what song and dance did they have in store for this, this time around? But they didn't show anything like that. They just showed a title screen of Just Dance 2016. And, also, and apparently they're having some kind of streaming service or something which I still I don't know exactly how that works I don't know if it's like uh I don't know something like uh you're you're some service where you're able to record stuff of just dance uh 2016 on like a like a side like twitch or something without music copyright bullshit oh yeah that that is, that is something to keep aware of yeah so, so I don't know what that is I mean honestly I mean I, I guess that seems cool but honestly for just dance, I just want to dance. That's all I want to do, with streaming or not. Sony. Ah, last guardian. So, last guardian. Oh, no, I know. It's like holy shit. That is actually happening. I you know, I, I know want that, one of those dog bird things. It's like, do you have any idea how long that has been in like I guess quote unquote development hell? We really had no idea what the hell was happening with this thing, and it's like I think we pretty much just figured it was abandoned at this point. But no, it's actually still alive. I feel so. I feel so bad right now. Why? Everyone is going crazy over the Last Guardian, and I have no clue what it is. It's by the same guys that did um, Ico and Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, I, I knew it had like an Ico Shadow of the Colossus feel to it, but as of it's last... the, it's it's the same it's the same guys. I will steal my girlfriend's PS4 if I have to. <laughs> but no, but but it's like in terms of just the Last Guardian itself, like the namesake, its development crisis. I know nothing about it. I don't. I have no clue on what the Last Guardian is all about. Like that my, that time that time when it like revealed in the conference was actually my first time hearing about it. Yeah. It was one of those games where it's like I said, like it had been, we had seen like, you know, initial footage and everything years and years and years ago. But then it's like, we would never see like anything new coming out of it. And then it's like, Oh, occasionally we might see, you know, Oh, here's a video to remind you that, yeah, this is still here, but we're not really showing you anything new. So it's like, you know, people just kind of took it as, you know, something's going on with the company and everything. And it's, you know, what looked to be a very promising entry was probably just not going to happen. And then this year, it's like, no, it's happening, and it's coming out next year. Barring if we don't get any fucking delays. <laughs> right. I honestly, did, I honestly did realize that The Last Guardian was a game that has been in development for so many years that everybody was waiting for this up until the Sony conference, and everyone was flipping out, for, for, and for good reasons, too, because they've been waiting for a game like this. I thought, oh, okay. In general, Sony were showing a lot of games, and I just found a lot of interest in between, like, friggin', like, what was it there? Kills, uh, Kills, or, no, not, not Killzone, um, it, it was, I think it was made by the same guys that made Killzone, that's where I heard it from. It was, uh, Horizon, I believe, actually. Uh, Dreams was another one I liked. Uh, some other ones as well. Yet. Oh, well, there was a, what about, how about that Final the Fantasy? The only thing I cared about during that oh, conference. Yes. Ah, God. There were was, there was so many games that made people <laughs> flip out of their seats, flip so many tables, it was insane. Final Fantasy VII Remake being one of them. I, I thought, I, it's funny, I thought that was a Kingdom Hearts like, like trailer at first, and then I saw the art style, and I was like, oh, no, this isn't Kingdom Hearts. I was like, wait a second, isn't that Cloud? <laughs> I, 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 reckon, I recognize that sword anywhere. Because here's the thing, you know, because I, I even tweeted about it, and, you know, and I had some people even that were like, you know, and from what I've been seeing, like a lot of general reaction was people was like, well, yeah, well, we knew this was coming. And it's like, I think people kind of forget that, yeah, people have been, it, it, it's kind of like with The Last Guardian. This is something that people have been begging for years. And Square, as opposed to, um, 
the company behind The Last Guardian where they were just kind of on radio silent because there was a lot of shit going on with the company and everything. Square was literally flip-flopping on whether this was happening or not. Yeah, you know, this is the kind of game that people joked about being made. Yeah, well, because, like, there was a year, like, the... the, the Okay, the whole remake thing started back when the PlayStation 3 was coming into creation. And Square, basically to show off the, uh, basically the processing power of the PlayStation 3, they remade the intro to Final Fantasy 7, so everybody immediately thought they were going to remake Final Fantasy 7 for the PlayStation 3. That's how far back this goes. And ever since then, like I said, Square has flip-flopped on the whole idea. Like, one year they'll say, oh yeah, we're doing, yeah, we'd like to do it. But then the next year it's like, no, we have no plans on doing it. But then the next year they're like, oh, maybe if the fans are interested. And it's like they were flip-flopping on it back and forth so many times that it just kind of got to that point. Like, I can't speak for everybody, but just speaking for myself, I kind of gave up on the hopes of there ever being a Final Fantasy VII remake because it just seemed like all Square cared about was, you know, providing filler episodes for Kingdom Hearts until Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out and trying to fix the fuck up that is Final Fantasy 13. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, you know what? Maybe making Lightning dress up as Cloud was a bad idea. Let's actually fix that and make this Final Fantasy 7 remake. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and, then have, and, then, and then have Cloud dress up like a girl anyway. <laughs> Oh, in yeah. HD! In HD! I, 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 yes. I, I, didn't, I hear, yes. didn't I hear at some point in time that Square actually Square Enix actually said that a remake of Final Fantasy VII just wasn't going to be planned at all at some point? Yeah, this was when they were flip-flopping. Okay. So now it's like, you know, again, this, you know, kind of like what I said, I had no idea what to make of that or anything. But now it's like, oh, it's actually happening. So now it's like, you know... Of course, everyone's going to be, of course, everybody's talking about that and everything, because it's like, you know, oh my god, Square, you're actually giving people what they fucking want. But it's like, at the same time, I think it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, yeah, guys, I'm a huge, huge, huge Final Fantasy VII fan. I mean, that is my favorite entry in the franchise. It holds a very near dear place in my heart. So... I will definitely be, like, you know, keeping my eye on this one to see how it's shaping up. You know, because, of course, we're going to get the updated graphics. Of course, we're going to get, you know, reorchestrated music and everything. I expect there's going to be a lot of changes. I'm hoping they're not going to be too much. Like, I expect maybe a new dungeon, maybe a new weapon to fight. At this point, I expect them to change um, Yuffie and Vincent from being optional characters to just being people that you will be required to get since, you know, they kind of became very important to the freaking storyline later on. You know, cough, cough, dirge of Cerberus. <laughs> but <Yeah>. it's like... <laughs> but at the same time... And this is the part that I'm really curious as to, oh, you know, all right, Square, how are you going to handle this? Because this is the riskiest part of the whole thing. When you take into consideration all the sequels and the prequels that they've made, you know, they, it's the, the whole narrative has expanded so much that it's like, if you were to look back at the original Final Fantasy VII, and with the knowledge of all these... Uh, all these sequels and prequels. Yeah, Seven's very outdated. So I honestly expect them to start including some of this new information. So it's like, don't be surprised to start seeing hints of Genesis or Deep Ground or, you know, anything like that showing up in this game, even if you don't want it to, because that's just that's just what's happened. They've expanded this world so much that they kind of have to include all this new information. So, I mean, that's like, and, and I think that can go one of two ways. It could end up being, you know, handled really poorly, like Dirge of Cerberus, or they could be doing, like, what they did with Crisis Core, where it's like, okay, we're bringing in new information, and yeah, the new information will be important, but all the old stuff that you know is still going to remain intact. So it's like, that's the hopeful route. So it's like, I want to see... I want to see the Final Fantasy VII remake more along the lines of the Crisis Core, like how they approach Crisis Core, than they did with Dirge of Cerberus, where it's like, okay, let's make Vincent the main character, let's make it a shooter, and uh, what do we do? Uh, let's just make some bullshit up, and oh, hey, here's an organization, they, they've they been around the whole time, they've just been underground. It's like, yeah, no. <laughs> 
Because, like, this, this is... So, so, so what? Oh, no, no, go on, no, go on, go on. I mean, like, just all things aside, like, any changes that they might make or any, just anything that they have to, like, add or and take away just from the original Final Fantasy VII, this is definitely something that I'm really looking forward to. Oh, oh, oh yeah. You and everybody yes. else. Well, 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 I mean... <laughs> I mean, BJ, I, to be honest, I, too, have never played Final Fantasy VII, and seeing as how they're going to be making a remake of this game, now I'm thinking I should probably at least try out the original. Yeah, do that. <laughs> like, like, get, like, like, uh, get, like get, the, get the one on Steam, which I, I still love how last year they teased everybody at that conference with, with the Final Fantasy VII trailer, only for it to be the PC port that they were adding to the PS4. I love how mad, yeah. I love how mad everybody got. Oh, do you know how many times Square's pulled that shit? They've done like you know. Oh, you have got like they make like a, I remember um they made like a page for like a countdown or something for like the world ends with you and people were thinking oh my god the world ends with you is getting a sequel and it's like nope it's a port for the iPad. Mm. Boo. <laughs> so it's like again you know. Flip flopping and cock teasing. Nobody expected this to happen. Aside from Final Fantasy VII and uh, The Last Guardian Returns being one of the many games that caused a lot of hype in the Sony crowd, apparently, apparently there's a Kickstarter that was announced regarding a, the uh, next Shinmu game, a uh, Shinmu Three. I've never played the Shinmu series, so I. Don't think I can really offer an opinion. I will say though, I'm actually very surprised to see Sony pretty much publicly, like, announcing and flat-out supporting a Kickstarter on, in, like, a major open forum like E3. That's, like, a, f that, that's, like, that's, like, a first. I have no idea what Shenmue is, though, and I feel bad, because a lot of people have been really hyping this up, and I've never even, like, played or heard of the Shenmue series. Like, does anyone know what Shenmue's about? I really want to know at this point. Uh... Nope. <laughs> Nope, well, we don't know. Uh, nope, we're, we're like one of the millions of people out there who have no fucking idea what Shinbu is. Is it millions I, or I, a major minority? I'm mostly familiar with the series just based on the, that the fact that the character was was in one of the uh, Sega All Star Racing games. Yeah, you, you know what? Yeah, that that's that's you know what? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's probably the only time I've ever seen anything Shinbu related. But even then, that was like years ago, and I'm just like, oh, there's this guy. Uh, uh, okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, like, um, the original uh, creator of the Shinmu series uh, went and started a Kickstarter, you know, like how a lot of developers are doing nowadays, since, you know, publishers are being dicks, and they're like, alright, screw that, we'll get the, you know, we'll, we'll resort to uh, crowdfunding to, you know, get shit done. And the original goal um, was uh, two million to completely make this game within like a day it's already surpassed the goal and it's all I, it's currently at three million two hundred forty four thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars like, wow, for, yeah, wow for, within, within a day and it's like this yeah, game not, is clearly not even well a received. day and the whole thing got funded so it's, it's like yeah like i was saying this game is clearly well received and i know nothing about it i feel so bad about it like i, I feel bad for not knowing <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, first Ukulele, then that new uh, Castlevania-like game, and Blood, now Bloodstained. Shinmu 3. Yes, thank you. And then Shinmu 3. <laughs> I'm sorry to feel a trend. Yeah, I will I will say, though, when it comes to, like, kickstarting uh, projects like that, it's obviously best to do it at events like E3, just because... What what better way to get it noticed than that? Well, like that's that. the thing. Well, that's the thing, though. This is like the first time I think I've ever seen le not not only a Kickstarter being announced on a public forum like E3, but a major publisher like uh, like Sony, pretty much coming forward and saying, "Yeah, you support this. We will make this happen." Because the whole point of the whole Kickstarter thing with a lot of these titles is, you know, they're being into they're being made and like, developed independently. You know, they're getting around the publishers and stuff because of issues. So I think just yeah. the fact... So just the fact that Sony is coming forward and is recognizing one of them and is giving flat-out support, I think this might be a sign that we can... That, you know, maybe maybe these developers, publishers, maybe they're starting to take notice. 
that it's like, yeah, we got developers that are making things that people want, and initially you guys were saying, no, it's not going to make you money, and yeah, within a day, these guys got three million bucks to make the game. I think that I think maybe we can take this as a sign that maybe the publishers are starting to take notice of this. Yeah, maybe. I I, I could definitely see that. Well, I, I hope. <laughs> But anyway. Okay, so then, um... A fair amount... And then, of course, you know, they talked about some things that, you know, we already talked about, like, you know, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, like the PlayStation 4 version, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, yeah, oh. okay, you know, uh, Street Fighter... That, 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 uh, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what Lindsay and I call our bathroom breaks. Yeah, it's like, um... <laughs> but, um... But yeah, it's like um, I think they mentioned. I think they mentioned Street Fighter Five at some point, like some new content that they're bringing onto the pl on the PlayStation Four. I imagine that oh, might yes. have caught your attention, Brandon. Yes. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's about goddamn time they actually made an official sequel and not an add-on to Street Fighter Four. Well, I'm honestly, I'm surprised they brought Birdie back from Street Fighter Alpha. It's like that's kind of a big surprise. But Cammy's back, and I'm happy about that. Like, I'm, like, Street Fighter V was obviously something I was super excited about for a while now. Problem is, I don't own a PS4 or powerful enough PC. So, it's like, I, I was, in the back of my head, just going off the, I really hope that they'll, um, finally decide to make Street Fighter V multi-platform sometime in the near future. Because I don't see why they would, wouldn't at least put, um... Street Fighter Five on the uh, on the Xbox One as well instead of just having it be a PS4 and PC exclusive. It's like I'm not I'm, I wasn't too sure what was up with that. Was it was Street Fighter Five really like just a PlayStation Four exclusive or was it just the beta? Well, no, it well no, it's um they clearly uh, went into detail saying that Street Fighter Five is only going to be released for the PS4 and the PC. Yeah, and that kind uh, of bugs uh, me okay, because it's like. Right. It, it's like, they've gone in... I don't know why they're deciding to, um... Or what made them make the decision to just say, hey, we're only gonna release certain titles for certain systems, when... Like, Mortal Kombat X, for example, like, it started on the PS, uh, PS4 and Xbox One, but later on they ported it to the, uh, PS3 and Xbox 360. And it's like, if you can do that with a game like that, why can't you do it for a game like Street Fighter V? I mean... I think they're trying too hard to either appeal to specific console um, owners or just trying too hard to get people to purchase a PS4. Uh, I don't know. That seems kind of unlikely. I mean, I, I know it's unlikely, but I'm just saying, I mean, the Xbox One in terms of graphics and, like, handling could handle Street Fighter V as well. So it's like, it just kind of bothers me that they don't, like, at least put it on the Xbox One as well. Like, if it needs to be a new-gen console exclusive, I understand that, at the very least. But to, for it to just be a PS4 and PC exclusive, I'm not too sure what's up with that. Uh, I, I, get, I guess, if anything, I can, only, I can only assume that, okay, as of right now, okay, they're gonna have a game like Street Fighter V just an exclusive to one console, but then sometime in the future, for whatever reason, Capcom is going to be like, oh, okay, well, uh, you know what? Screw it. Let's see if we can raise the sales of Street Fighter V even more and and expand it to other platforms. I'm hoping they do. Yeah, but, but yeah, like I said before, that's just a mere assumption. I, and, I mean, I know, I know, but it's still, I'm, I'm hoping that they actually do decide to do that because I'm really excited for Street Fighter V. Like, I've been an avid Street Fighter player for a while now, and it's like to see them advance and evolve their um, content of Street Fighter to this level. Like, instead of us just getting multiple versions of Street Fighter IV, we're finally getting something past that. And it's like I'm obviously really excited for it, but you know limitations and stuff like that is just is, is what's really bothering me so i'm hoping in some point in the future that they do change that ah uh, i guess it's one of those many instances where only time will tell yeah that's true but anyway All right. so was there, so there anything else with the sony conference that got your interest or you felt like you want to talk about well, chibi final fantasy <laughs> oh the, the world oh, yeah. of final fantasy 
Oh yeah, that that was the one thing Final Fantasy related that they showed before the reveal of the Final Fantasy VII remake. So wait, God wait, damn it! Wait, what's the world of Final Fantasy? I didn't hear about this one. Uh, but I, I guess uh, for what uh, we saw from the trailer, basically it's like a chibi version of Final Fantasy. Well, mm, so, so did, uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I got out of it. I'm pretty sure there was more to it, but I guess I was too drawn by... You know what? That's, that's I'm really glad you brought this up, because that was the one thing that I've noticed throughout the Sony conference. They've added so much goddamn adorableness. Yeah, it's like, I, I guess basically, think theater rhythm Final Fantasy, except an actual RPG. Yeah. <laughs> and, not a, and, and, not a, and not a music rhythm game. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that's like, I didn't hear about this one. Apparently, you know, everyone just gave a shit about the Final Fantasy VII thing. So well, this one, like, like, I, like heard people... no, I heard nobody talking about this one. Well, yeah, because this, 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 this came up before. It's like, pe- people were excited to see it, but then, yeah, then, then Final Fantasy VII happened, and then everyone kind of just forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> what, World of Final... We are, we're now showing off World of Final Fantasy. Yay! Now we have a Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh my god! Yeah, now it's like, yeah, now no one gives a shit about this anymore. <laughs> I, 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 I'm Everyone in the world way of saying, saying hey, let's, here's something to hold you guys over until we get the remake going. <laughs> oh, you thought that was great? I will pile Disney Infinity Star Wars figures. Uh, uh BJ, you're, yeah, BJ, you play Disney Infinity. Oh yeah, I do, don't I? Yeah, to do. <laughs> I, I yeah, kind of like, 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 stopped like, collecting the, the Infinity figures once when the Amiibos came out. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, sorry, Sony, like Amiibos kind of doing it better. Well, no, they're really not. Like the Amiibos are releasing characters that I have more of an attachment to, as opposed to as, as opposed to I, I grew up with Disney, but then I became more attached to let, Nintendo. Let, let's be real. Amiibos kind of, but Amiibos pretty much dominating the other action figure market. You know, yeah, not, you know, except, well, for, the fact, except Russell, for the fact not, that Nintendo can't seem to supply these things, and we still have to rely yes. on scalpers. Exactly. Yeah, not, not, no, Disney, not, Disney's not the right got their reason. shit together when it comes to that. No, but I'm exactly. saying though, the fact like, that people like, are they're, still, they're dominating, but not for the right reasons. Russell. Well, I know. I'm just saying like, the fact I don't that think, people still uh, Russell, 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 Russell. I don't think Nintendo really has a grasp on how to because uh, these are really good quality figures. So the fact that they can only make so many, like, is probably why they're not able to supply them as as often as I'm sure they'd like to. There's even there's even been um, there there actually has been statements made from like both from like Activision as well as like as well as Disney like you know like the guys that make Skylanders and then Disney Infinity and such. They they're like they're appalled by how Nintendo by by how Nintendo is handling these figures. Oh really? And actually, and I, I'm I'm jumping a little I'm actually jumping a little ahead, ahead of myself here, but um. Like at the Nintendo conference, they did release. They did announce um, a, a Donkey Kong and Bowser Skylanders figure. Yeah, it's from a Skylander yeah, Supercharger. That, that can also be used as amiibos. Peep, peep, but so that, that was like you know the first time where amiibos and Skylanders were collaborating. People took that as, oh, thank God, Activision is taking over the amiibo production. No, they're not. Sorry. Actually, you know, I think that I think that's probably a good segue to actually go into Nintendo because that pretty much was the next big conference. Well, well actually. I pr- I propose that okay. I don't know if you saw the Square Enix conference like you. I'm ta- by that I'm saying for you, Danny and Brandon. Did you guys see the Square Enix conference? No, them. but I know there's only one thing anyone gave a shit well, about. Okay, and that okay, one well, too. Well, 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 here, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, BJ. I think you and I we could both agree that was the most boring conference out of there. So I propose. We just knock out the, just one, the one thing that we all give a shit about in the Square Enix conference, and then move you, on to Nintendo. You, you, you mean the one thing that, that I'm pretty sure my girlfriend and her, and her sister are still are, are still keeping their legs wide open for keyblades to, to be prop, to be properly shoved up their asses for? Bruh. Oh, abs- oh, absolutely, <laughs> bro. So, you, yeah, you think I'm so, joking, but both, yeah, my, we got both an- my girl- So yeah, we got another trailer for Kingdom Hearts three, which. Pretty much the only thing it revealed is Tangled is coming into this. Well, so, so, something interesting that it also showed, like, um, I, I know my girlfriend made a, yeah, Lindsay made a huge stick about this, regarding that be, that beginning cutscene with, um, the young version of Equius and... Not, not, not Equius, Ericus. Ericus, thank you. Yeah, like, um... This isn't Homestuck. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the young version... <laughs> fuck you, <Russell>. <laughs> <laughs> the, young, the young version of Ericus and Xehanort. 
and the things that they were talking about. Like, Lindsay made a huge stink about that. Like, I, I Why? She was here. I kind of wish she was here now so she could actually explain it into better detail. But, like, she was like she, like, she was freaking out about that. Like, freaking out good or freaking out bad? Good. Okay, that's where I was like, yeah, because it's like, that could be taken in two ways, really. I think it's also mostly because, like, like actually funny enough, like, a- after that conference, like, because I was still very confused, because, like, she brought up, like, some, like, the things, like, about the X-Blade, and, like, because I didn't play Birth by Sleep. But oh, she's gonna, okay. She's, she's going to make me play it. So, like, and she told, she told, like, I told her, like, you know, the only games I played were 1, 2, and Chain of Memories, and she told me, it's like, okay, when we, when you get back to college, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to glue my PSP into your hands, you're playing this fucking game. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, real, yeah, on, and honestly, BJ, I think, like, out of all of, like, I guess what you can call the filler games in between two and three. In my humble opinion, Birth by Sleep was the best one. It is genuinely a lot of fun to play. You get a lot of really cool new information, but it's just so much fun. Honestly, I think you'll like Birth by Sleep. She she, she did also she 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 also did like kind of help catch me up on a little bit of things. Like she sent me these two uh, translated comics that she got regarding um. Some events that took place like before before Birth by Sleep, like like uh like uh like where Vanitas came from, like what like what why why Ventus is now like with 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 Ericus and Terra and Aqua and all that. It was a pretty it was a pretty charming comic, not fucking disturbing of anything, but like you know. But yeah, it's like um, but yeah, as far as that, it's like um. Yeah, as far as, like, um, the Tangled world, because I know, I've seen a lot of people flipping out on Twitter, like, you know, oh my god, Tangled, I fucking love Tangled, and I was like, you know, I was like, alright. It was kind of weird, though, just because I remembered hearing, we were hearing a lot of rumors of Frozen getting in this, so I'm honestly kind of surprised that we're not seeing Frozen yet, anyway, and that's if Frozen's gonna be in it at all. I kind of figured. I, I kind of figured, if anything, considering how much Disney loves to fucking whore out Frozen right now, that E three would be the place to show off. Hey, Frozen's becoming a world in this game, but no, they gave the spotlight to Tangled, so that that it, one's actually, actually surprised me. Interesting. Well, interestingly enough, Danny, like you, you say, you know, obviously Frozen is like the big one, but interestingly enough, the the staff, you know, that are working on this game, they were actually more excited about getting Tangled into this into this game. Like, cause you know, like obviously, like you know, there'll be story writers that they, they they bring up what worlds they want in and all the such. Yeah. You know, like obviously they pitch the ideas and they, they they do predominantly want new worlds, you know, worlds that have never been introduced in the parts before, you know, prior. Yeah. But Tangled apparently was like the big one. That's the one that all the staff kept, like not just insisting, pushing. They wanted Tangled in this game. Like, really bad. <laughs> nice. Like Tangled was the big one for them. Which is probably why it was the one that we showed off. Yeah, and I think maybe even then we should also clarify that it's like, it was just the world. Like, we were seeing, like, Sora, like, you know, going around on the maps and everything. You saw the tower. So, I mean, that's like, it was very obvious that it was Tangled. We didn't really see any characters. So, I mean... No, I, all, all we saw was Rapunzel's tower. Yeah, so I was like, we didn't get to see... Yeah, we didn't get to see what Rapunzel's gonna look like. We didn't get to see Flynn. We didn't get to see Mother Gothel or the horse or or any of them. So, that's where it's like, you know... Sorry if you guys were kind of hoping that you'd be seeing actual characters showing up in this thing. It's like, no, nah, not yet. You still gotta wait for that. I'm laughing because, like, the... Fr- the, the, the one thing that, that my girlfriend wants above everything else is for Sora to enter that tower and then just get nailed in the face by a frying pan. Oh, I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else you guys want to talk about regarding uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 or anything of the sort? We still do not even have so much as a window date. I mean, it even just says oh, it's, in yes. deve- it's in development. I mean, I figured it, you know... Square, for better or for worse, love to take their time when it comes to making their games. You know, it's like, yeah, love or hate their games, they do spend a lot of time on them. So when that first trailer, when they announced that King Marts 3 is on the way, it's like, uh, people, I would, I was shaking my head because people were going, oh, we're going to get it like next year or something. And it's like, you guys really don't know how Square operates, do you? It's like, yes, it's been like a year or two since that trailer and it's still being developed. And I kind of anticipated that. Like, I honestly don't think we will be getting Kingdom Hearts 3 until maybe like 2017. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. 
I, I think it's going to be that late. Oh man, my good buddy Justin, who is a mate, who's a hardcore Kingdom Hearts fan, boy, he's going to be peeved. But yeah, but yeah, if yeah, if Square Enix does take their time with making games like this, you know what? What what can you do? Quantity over quality, I guess. I mean, quality over quantity. And you know what? That's that's actually how my girlfriend looks at it too. She's she's just like like I even asked like like you know we're probably not going to get this game for like another year or so. Like she she said, you know what? That's fine. I I just, I just want it to be good. <laughs> right. said, said every gamer ever. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, that's like I mean, I know technically there was more in the Square Conference, but to be honest, I don't hear anyone talking about the rest of the Square Conference. All anyone talked about was Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. okay, now now we can talk about Nintendo. <laughs> now now I have another now, now I have another propo- I have I have another proposal. Um, I. Right. Seeing as how, like, I know we were trying to do a video on this on your your main channel, BJ, but I propose, like, maybe we could briefly cover what happened during the, uh, the Smash Brothers Direct that occurred before the, the digital event. Yeah, well, I-, I was actually about to say we talked about that first, and it was that was literally the, that was the, that was the jump start of E3, so. Yeah, right, right. So, yeah, it's like, for those who don't know, uh, before all these, all this other stuff regarding E3 occurred, um... Aside from having Smash Brothers in the digital event, uh, they decided to have everything Smash Brothers related in its own direct. And pretty much, the, like I'm, pre- I'm sure most of you already know it at this point. Like, like the sum of it up is pretty much uh, it's all DLC. We got Lucas, we got Roy, we got Ryu. They're all really fun to play as. We got a bunch of Miiverse co- or Mi- Mi- Mi Fighter costumes. We got a couple stages. It was all fun and dandy. Yeah, and yeah, and apparently the announcement of even more amiibos on Wave Five, such as Me Fighters, which I, which I, I'm still befuddled by the fact they made Me fi- amiibos based on the Mies. But that, but that's just, I mean, not in the bad way, not in the bad way. But yeah, there was the Me Fighters, there was Rob, Duck Hunt, thank you God, Mister Game Watch, and apparently Falco. At yeah, Falco. Which we, we you think we get Falco earlier, but we're yeah. Not and Game Watch and Game and Watch is interesting in the sense that Game and Watch is a customizable amiibo. Like you, like apparently there's gonna be like multiple poses for Game and Watch, which you can like take out of the stand and put in a new one for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm wondering why they decided decided to do that for Game and Watch. You know why? Probably because because Game and Watch is a flat character, and based on how they kept putting him in, they're like, "Fuck, he keeps just falling out of the stand." You know what? Fuck it. Let's just. Let's just make multiple. Let's just make multiple poses. <laughs> if, someone, if, some, if, if, if they lose one, they can just have another one to put in. Well, can't we just super glue glue Mr. Game and Watch to the stand? No, that would look terrible. What are you thinking? <laughs> I apologize if you hear me sucking and chewing. I am currently eating runts. Oh, okay. No worries. Nice. Fucking love runts. But I'm like, so now to Nintendo itself. So Nintendo started out, started out strong by proving that everyone that everyone in, in, in Nintendo are furries. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. The, the, the all right. Last year, Nintendo used the theme of Robot Chicken for uh, their digital event, which I thought was hysterical beyond belief. But then they decided to one up that, and they made Iwata, Reggie, and Miyamoto Muppets. Oh yeah. And it, and and they actually are Muppets, like the, like the, like the guys who you know who actually work on the Muppet Show and stuff actually did do this. And oh, and oh my god, it was so hilarious to watch the intro and even like the little um, transition uh, skits that went on in between. But but yeah, like the intro, we see like uh, Iwata Miyamoto and Reggie like getting ready to go on stage for um, the other uh, digital event. Yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for yeah. And then eventually, Miyamoto slowly turns into Fox, Reggie slowly turns into Falco, and Iwata slowly turns into Peppy. No love for and... the Slippy? Good. No, what What the fuck kind of Good. question is that? <laughs> Good. No love for the Slippy. Good. <laughs> Rude. Uh, but, okay, even so, yes, if you... I, I can only imagine for the lot of you who f- saw the introduction to the digital event for the first time, you know where they was going. They started off the digital event strong by finally showing off the, ne- the next Star Fox game. 
Oh, the yeah. Wii U Star Fox Zero. And, oh, my God, it looks beautiful. It's, just, it's, a, it's like um, the traditional Star Fox that we know. So, like it's so not like it's, so not like adventure, not like adventures, and not like yeah. Assault. No more, oh, no, God, more no, no, no more, yeah, no more like running, adventures. no more running around, no more hand to hand combat or anything. It's it's but pretty much closest, it's, it's back. It's, to, like, it, it's kind of it's back to you know the sixty four where you're flying well, around. Well, t- yes that's, that's, and that's not no. All true in terms of running around because they did bring in the concept that was actually uh, initially uh, brought up in, in in the canceled Star Fox game, Star Fox Two where the R-Wing is able to transform into various different modes. Like, the R-Wing can turn into a chicken mode that can actually walk on land and such. Oh. So, so it's like, there's a bit of walking around, but yeah, it's nothing compared to, like, the ground missions on Assault. Or, yeah, like, how you control Fox in Adventure. Yeah, it's pretty much back to, okay, yeah, R-Wings most of the time, and then the occasional other vehicle. I don't know why everyone was bagging on Adventure so much. I thought it was a pretty good game. I never played it. Then again, the only Star Fox game I played was 64. I am a sad motherfucker. <laughs> it's, a, it's okay, Adventures was the only game I played, and a lot of people probably call me even more sad for that. What, I, what also really intrigued me regarding, um, like, not just Star Fox Zero, but also, like, the, the origins behind Star Fox in general was how Miyamoto got into depth about, um, like, how he came up with the idea for Star Fox, like, through the developer story. Um... Yeah, I believe I believe he was talking about um like he lives right next to um this a shrine which uh apparently it's God was like a fox and I guess uh, he, at the same time when he it was like he was a child and he was watching like some kind of cartoon that involved fighter planes and I guess because of that it inspired him to make uh, not only just a fighter plane like game but also make the main character you know Fox and Star Fox and all that jazz. Oh, that's actually kind of interesting. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I missed out on the Nintendo Direct just because the morning that I was supposed to watch it, our internet company shut us down. So, so uh, I, I, hadn't been, I hadn't been able to watch the Direct. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm more, I, I am more excited about Fire Emblem Fates. Wait, I'm more excited about what now? Fire Emblem Fates. Oh, wait, that's the new, wait, that's the new name now? That's, that's, that's that, the yeah, that's, being, the, that's, that's the, the name. name that's the name. It's going to be known as when it's been brought over here. Oh, to America. Okay. Yeah, and we have. And speaking of Fire Emblem, we also have um, a release window for the uh, Shimagami Tensei Fire Emblem crossover. Oh, that's that's been that is true. Announced yeah. Release date. Um, not so much a release date, but at least like a release window. Like you know, like it, they basically said you know it's you know I'm trying to remember. I think they pretty. I think they said um, twenty sixteen okay. is when we're getting it. So we're getting it next year. Okay, I was gonna. Say I think that. actually, in in general, actually, I think Nintendo said all these games. The, the only games that they showed off for, for this E three were games that they plan on having. That all all of them, they hope anyway, they're all going to be out before, well, at least by early twenty sixteen. Mm-hmm. Like these should all be out by next spring. Yeah, and the trailer confirmed Fire Emblem characters. Yes. So yeah, um, you guys remember when this trailer first, like when they first had the announcement trailer, and people were like, "Where are the Fire Emblem characters?" Yeah, they've been there all along, and it was funny because like most people, I think, recognized Tiki right away because that was the one I saw a lot of people were going, "Oh wait a minute, that looks like Tiki," and sure enough, it is Tiki. Um, the main girl, I think, is supposed to be um, I think what's her name. Cheetah or something. She's from like the first Fire Emblem. I think she's the Pegasus Knight from the first Fire Emblem. She's being brought into this. There's another character that I don't recognize, but you know, I don't know what game he's from. And then Krom. I fucking called Krom. And I even had people on Twitter telling me, nah, I don't think that's Krom, even though I pointed out the blatant freaking Falchion laying on his hip. Sure enough, it's fucking Krom. So it's like, yeah. booyah, I know my man Krom. <laughs> they, they, they just made Krom even more badass in that game. Yeah so, I'm, yeah, so it's like, you know, so to anybody out there that had, like, any doubt, like, you know, oh, all I see is Persona, where's the Fire Emblem? The Fire Emblem has been there, they're just under drastic redesigns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Oh, and um, and um, Brandon, Xenoblade Chronicles has a release date. When? <laughs> When? 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 No, it's like, since we're talking about release dates and everything, Xenoblade Chronicles has an official release date. When? Yeah, what? what December, what's Dece- December 4th of this year. I get it. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty much coming out for Christmas. <laughs> you're you're going to get it for me for my, for my birthday, right, Russell? Well, I mean, I was going to say, you know, speaking of Nintendo crossover games, who would have thought that fucking Mario and Luigi would be crossing over with the Paper Mario universe in Mario and Luigi Paper Jam? That was probably the most exciting thing that I got over. Like, that made me so fucking happy. <laughs> All- <laughs> like... Literally two of my favorite RPG genres sma- smashed together. I knew for a fact you would be ecstatic for it because I know how much you love the Paper Mario series. It's like, I, I, I've only played Super Mario RPG. That's the only RPG series I played in the Mario universe. And what, 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 makes, me sa- what makes me sad, though, so many people actually hated on that idea. Like, 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 like because pe- a lot of people, like, like pr- pretty much... Anybody, like, here's how it works. Like, you know, we, we have your Mario, Luigi fans, we have your Paper Mario fans. Mario, Luigi fans were ecstatic, about, were ecstatic about this. Most Paper Mario fans were fucking disgusted by it. Like, give us a real Paper Mario game! What the fuck? It's like, bruh. Dude. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it has legit Paper Mario goodness in it. What more do you want? This game's gonna be fucking brilliant, and you're all just say, and you're all, you're all just salty. <laughs> yeah, it's like BJ. You know, it's it's pretty much like uh, it's pretty much like a uh, Sonic Four Episode One. Bitch, all you want, we know you're gonna buy it. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, sit down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, it, it actually, does it's look like, interesting. Um, I mean, I'll probably yeah. give it a try. You know, you know what caught my my interest with Nintendo. I had been saying this for fucking years that Nintendo should have done this. A four sword style dungeon crawler multiplayer game. All right. I have been saying, for, ye- here. I have been saying for years yep. that Nintendo should have been doing that. I mean, it's like, you don't, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to have like a complex storyline or anything. It's like just do randomly generated dungeons and, you know, allow four player co op. That's all you need. And, you know, and make it really fun to play. And sure enough, now they're fucking doing it. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. And now she have the Powerpuff Links. <laughs> yeah, Legend of Zelda <laughs> Triforce Heroes. That's actually yeah, it's point. like, you know... Yes. Y- yeah, it's like, you know... R.I.P. Purple Link. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah... Uh, for, yeah, for, for whatever reason, it's the green Link, the blue Link, and the red Link. But Vio... Vio seems to have died. So it's yeah, like, I'm not, yeah... I'm not sure what's up with that. They decided to go for only a three-player... Um, a three-player mechanic for this game, but, yeah, su- but surprisingly, it's like surprisingly yeah, it's three-player, can... not four-player. But you know what? I don't care. It's fucking online. Yeah, I was about to say. Surprisingly enough, you can actually play this game online with your friends. So yeah, so that's like I, yeah. So I mean, that's like if I got this, and if like you know you got it, Brandon, and if Ryan got it, that means the three of us can go through dungeons together. I'm fucking stoked for that shit. And I'll just be I'll I'll just be over there in the corner playing my 3DS version of Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll be playing as a boat. Yeah, that yeah, that's also gonna be a thing. I guess Hyder Hyder Warriors is also getting a port on the 3DS. Well, yeah, it's under a different title though, which is kind of weird. But well, it's called Hyrule. It's called Hyrule yeah. Legends. Yeah, like I, I think I, I'm not sure. Like I, I think from what was shown, it is just some kind of port. But it is showing off two new characters in the form of uh, bringing in some Wind Waker elements in the form of Tetra and Daphne's. Or the King of Red Lions for the for people who don't know. Yeah, and is. and yeah, and I mean, yes, he literally transforms into a boat and runs and people over. And I'm going to love it. But it, are they <laughs> are they only are they only accessible to the 3DS version though? Uh, no. If you if 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 you connect when you do get the 3DS version, you can't connect it to the Wii U version, and you will be able to transfer uh, Tetra and Daphne's or unlock Tetra and Daphne's in the Wii okay, U version. Okay, so. I guess just, I, I guess just for completionist's sake, I will have to pick this game up. 
Also, this made me very sad. Apparently, to celebrate this, they actually, they actually, they actually, I, like, E3 didn't even announce this. They did it in secret. You, you had, you had to, you had to open up Hyrule Warriors to even see this happen. But they fucking actually like made, gave, like, gave a, a new costume for Link in the form of Classic Link, where it's pretty much his costume from the from the CDI game. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a thing. I was. That's act, it's act, like, open up, open up Hyrule Warriors right now, both you and Danny, and you will fucking get this costume, and you will actually fucking see it. And like, I, I, I brought this up on Twitter, and then like, like fucking oh, Lindsay uh-huh. was just sitting there. Lindsay was just sitting there bombarding me with memes, and I, I she was just bar- bombarding me with memes. Hold up, I'm ta- the war flash. I'm my Wii right now. Yeah, I love my girlfriend, but she, she, she's evil. <laughs> <laughs> she is, she, she is a me, she is a memeing motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, I just think it's funny that it's like, you know, I, that's like, if anything, like Nintendo, I think at this point, they kind of, like, even though, you know, we always think of the CDI games that we call it the unholy Triforce and everything, <laughs> Nintendo's kind of embraced it. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're bad games, but it's like, they've pretty much embraced it at this point because of, like, you know, how infamous and how popular they've gotten, you know, just, just with the memes alone. So it's like, Nintendo is like, we're gonna have fun with this. Yeah, shout out to the YouTube poop community. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like, they tried passing it off as it, be, as it being classically from, like, you know, the, like from like, you know the, the original Zelda titles and such, but just based on the style that was given, and, you know, based on the link that was, like, the the, um, the size of link that was used, it's clearly a CDI link. Like, Hold fuck. on. I just put it in my disc. Give me a minute. <laughs> well, I guess we'll wait, we'll wait for Russell to, to, to get bombarded with that. How about that Metroid game that everyone hates? Yeah, yeah I heard. I haven't seen that, <laughs> but I heard that apparently, yeah, there's like a Metroid Prime game or something, and everybody's hating on it. Yeah, it's, it's, Metroid it's, Prime it's, Federation Force. It's it's more of a spinoff game. I think it's like a, a kind of it's kind of like a space sports game, from what I'm seeing. S- something like, like that. It's like the first Metroid game that people have gotten in years, and people are. Fucking hate yeah. it. Like, I don't. I don't play Metroid, so I really don't care. I'm probably not going to get it either way because I, I. The only game. The only. The only amount of Metroid I've, I've ever played was like a little bit of Super Metroid, but that was about it. But um, yeah, it's like people are fucking racking on this game. It looks like a perfectly fine game too, but they're just hating on it because this is the first Metroid game that we've gotten in years. It, this would be the equivalent of like, oh, we finally get an F Zero game, except it's a first person shooter. <laughs> what yeah, is see, that's like, huh? like I saw. See, I saw like oh, a, I, th- I, th- I think I think Russell got it. Yeah. See, I saw some Call Me Johnny's um video, like he did a video on it because apparently, you know, he's a really big Metroid Prime fan, and just from watching his video, I mean, he was very calm and collected about it. You know, basically, he was like, "Am I disappointed that it's not the Metroid Prime game that I thought it was going to be?" Yeah. Am I throwing a shit fit over it? No. Do I think it deserves all the hate it's getting? No. So it's like, like he's being very level-headed and cool about it. I mean, he recognizes his disappointment, but he's not, you know, he's not going ape shit. Pretty much. Uh, this actually looks... I don't even know what to say about this. (laughs) <laughs> oh, about the picture. <laughs> no, no, he 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 opened up he opened up his Hyrule Warriors disc on his Wii U, and he he just got the costume. Uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good, oh, good lord. <laughs> oh, that's <is> so great. <laughs> oh, but yeah, all of all of the hate for this this random ass Metroid Prime game, I guess. Okay, so that's a thing. I, I, I guess. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty much on the same boat with BJ here. I've never played any Metroid games, so I honestly don't give a shit. Yeah. And, but about more games that all of us will give, about, give more of a shit about, Yoshi's Wildy World! Oh, yeah, that's happening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We got yeah. We, they showed up more Yoshi's Wally World. <laughs> I know. It's like I fucking love Kirby's Epic Yarn. That's why it's like I loved Epic Yarn. I don't. I honestly have no re. I have no excuse why I keep forgetting about Wooly World. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you uh, think I'd remember it, but no. Yoshi goes full on cosplay. Yeah, yeah. Once again, while they were showing off a of Yoshi Wooly World, they once again showed us that uh, yes, uh, it does have amiibo functionality and. 
and uh, the Yarn Yoshi can transform into certain uh, Nintendo costumes depending on uh, what amiibo you put on the gamepad. So you can literally put any. Like, it, it, it literally compatible. It's literally compatible with every single goddamn amiibo. <laughs> and it, it'll actually give Yoshi the color of that of that character. I wa- you know what? In that case, I wonder if you could make a Splatoon Yoshi. Yeah, you can. Yes. Mega Man Yoshi. <laughs> yes. Yep. If you have an amiibo of it, it's, not, it's, it, you, it's guaranteed yes. to happen. <laughs> yes. I, I feel so bad for that, um, for, for the game's director, though. Like, she was talking about how, you know, like, she's not really much into programming. She she, she, she really wasn't good into, into art design or anything. So she wanted to know, like, how she could be more contributive. So she went home, actually made a little a little Yoshi made of yarn, came back, and Nintendo was like, make an amiibo of it. <laughs> so that, so and, that, and, yeah, and make a those, game out those, of it. Those yarn Yoshi amiibos, they're actually plushies. They're actually made of yarn. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, pretty much. Oh, that actually uh, sounds adorable. I want twenty. <laughs> There's only three. There's only three colors, but I want twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you know, funny you should mention that because I think a lot of people who saw that por- that portion of the direct can, can. I think I was the only one who was thinking this when I say, "Hmm, how much you want to bet that all those yard Yoshi that were on the freaking table when they were sh- when they were showing the." person behind the yarn of people, those are the only ones that are going to be up a retailer. <laughs> she, had a, well, she, had, she had like a whole little basket full of them. Like a whole little Easter basket. It's like a little it's Easter like basket and then the table like filled with all the three colored uh, yarn Yoshi's. So like, <laughs> is this all we're getting? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that, that, what, what was like, was it established that she was the only one who was making all of those yarn no, Yoshi I, I'm sure there are more people making yeah, I, I would think so. There's one, one poor girl working on every single amiibo in the world, or Yarn Yoshi amiibo in the world. What the fuck? Yeah, I was gonna say I, if that was the case, I would feel incredibly bad for her. But yeah, I could, I would, I would think that she would get some help with making those things. Oh, but oh, but yeah, even but yeah, even so, still, all right. I I never played Kirby's Epic Yarn Adventure, but goddamn it, that does not mean I would. Not want to get in on Yoshi's Wally World. Yeah, I, I definitely do want to give that game a try as well. Like, just something like a, something relaxing and something to just enjoy yourself with, aside from the games that we usually play. Okay, mm-hmm. and then um, I'm trying to think. Um, weren't you guys also talking about um, uh, we have some Animal Crossing stuff? Uh, oh yeah, Animal uh, Crossing. I heard you because I heard you guys talking about Animal Crossings. I am so mad. Apparently, the uh, quote unquote Animal Crossing we've all been waiting for for the Wii U. I am so mad. Except not. <laughs> so, like, yeah, before, on the 3DS. Before E3 even started, I said there should be a new Animal Crossing game on the Wii U. This was not what I was talking about. <laughs> What? Why? What's on? What? What's? What's the Animal Crossing game on okay, the Wii U? For one, for, one thing, for, one thing, for one thing, there was there was two there was two Animal Crossing games that, are, that were officially announced. There was that retail game, which is for the 3DS, where you can actually um, it's not your it's not your tra- traditional Animal Crossing game. It's a game where you where your character is actually working for the uh that the, the happy the, the happy home yeah, retailer it's, thing. It's, you know that it's literally a spinoff. And it, you, you you can actually you actually build the town yourself. You know, like you you can actually build your neighbors' houses and like actually. You know, like actually decorate their houses for them. Yeah, and stuff. Animal, okay. Crossing, Animal Crossing. Oh, so Happy it's not just it's not just you, you know you're only responsible for you. Now it's you're like responsible it, it, for everybody. Oh, okay. Uh, Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. Yeah. Okay. Wait, depends, yeah, yeah, actually, Russell, you, you, actually, you know what they just confirmed today, Russell, about that game, which you're gonna love. You, you, uh, you can you can actually you, you can actually um cut uh, you can actually customize your character's skin skin tones manually now. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> This poor asshole spending hours trying to get a tan so we can match so, 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 so his character. Great! <laughs> like skin, like you can change your skin tone in an Animal Crossing game. That's not actually an Animal Crossing game. That's exactly what we wanted, in Nintendo. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, you know what? You know, you, you know what, Russell? That, that just means in the in, in the actual future Animal Crossing game that that will be a function now. <laughs> But yes, that was the 3DS game. The Wii U Animal Crossing game I'm we got was pretty so much the Animal Crossing version of Mario Party. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? They also confirmed a bunch of a bunch of Animal Crossing amiibos. So I'm getting them all. Ah, uh, the Isabella amiibo. Isabel, Isabel, KK, KK Slider. Ah, KK Slider. KK Slider. Ah. 
this was not the prediction I was talking about. But, <laughs> but two, we're getting Animal Crossing Amiibo! <laughs> The, the amiibos, the Animal Crossing amiibos, are literally the only thing I care about right now. God, God, imagine if later on down the road, during the development of this game, they added more Animal Crossing amiibo to the lineup, and we get Brissetti. <laughs> All right, so Ryan and BJ are very excited for Animal Crossing, and Brandon is very salty. <laughs> I'm only salty. If this is a board I'm... game and not an actual Animal Crossing game. I mean, I mean, honestly, I'm more so excited about the Amiibos than anything. However, I honestly maybe would probably want to give the actual uh, Amiibo Festival game a shot. Maybe I'd be, I'd be okay with it if it actually had online like Fortune Street. Like if this was like the next Fortune Street esque game, I'd be okay with it. But it's not. Well, Animal Crossing. So Animal Crossing so far has been known for having for having pretty good. But online. this, but this game like, doesn't. Well, well, well. They, they, you know, don't then, then, then go get some actual friends, bro. <laughs> I hate you. Are you are you saying are you saying you guys aren't my actual friends? <laughs> well, I mean, we're your friends, but we're like millions of miles away from you. <laughs> so, I mean, by the time, by, by the time this game comes out, I'll be living with my girlfriend, so we can play together. <laughs> Lonely. I hate your face. I'm so lonely. I love you too, Russell. <laughs> well, so yeah, it is true. Even even if Mario Party is uh, Animal Crossing themed, it still ruins friendships. You can't, you can't, you can't even <laughs> ruining friendships. You don't. You, you, don't, you don't have. You don't even have to play the game for it to ruin friendships. <laughs> it just does it. You can't even call me lonely. Oh, let's see. So, what else so yeah, uh, BJ, we, BJ oh, constantly oh. ragging on Brandon. Oh, see, oh, we, we also did get a new Mar- uh, a new Mario tennis game announced. Yeah, no, that, that 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 I, one I I'm loved. Excited for. I rem- I remembered playing the shit out of that game with one of my friends when I was like ten years now, old. Now, 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 now I loved Mar- Mario now tennis. Are we, talking, are we talking Mario Power Tennis for the GameCube? Because that game was amazing. I, I oh I I was thinking more so along the lines of uh, the Mario the 64. Like, uh, Mario ten- yes, the Nintendo sixty four. Okay, Thank you. I, cause I, I, I own, I own <laughs> that one too, fun? and it was pretty fun. But Mario Power Tennis was like so much more fun, and this game looks amazing. So I'm act- I actually am excited for that. Actually, fun little story with Mario Tennis too. There was um when I was visiting New York, there was a, there was this McDonald's that I went to that actually had like sixty fours like set up for people to play games. One of the games that, that was set up was a uh, uh, yeah the, the Mario Tennis game. And like my uncle saw that I was really enjoying it, so she, he got me the GameCube version, and then he realized, oh shit, I got you the wrong one. And I played it, and I was like, nope, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is okay. Like, so good. <laughs> so good. Uh... <laughs> Overall, though, it's like it's funny. Like, um, I think it's actually funny. Like, I'll, I know I'm going to be getting more games from this from this that were announced here at Nintendo than I will from the Sony. Like, there's a lot of games from Sony that I'm going to want to get. Obviously, I won't be able to get to play them until like Lindsay and I are living together. But like, um, I actually found I actually think the Sony conference may have been a little more hype than the Nintendo. The, the Nintendo conference did feel a little underwhelming in terms of its presentation. That's what I've been hearing. Like, the general consensus is like Nintendo started out very strong, and then it just kind of petered out at the very end yeah. well that's fine like like because the, the, the way I, the, the way i look at it not every con not, not every conference can be great not every con you know you, they're not they're not really going to be getting all the, all the all you know a lot of the big games out like you know all the time there, there will be some times where you know here's just some smaller things working out while we work on the bigger things in the and background and that's fine i understand that <laughs> like I, I think so, the, the sony conference did make me more hype like more hype, more feel, more hype. But I, I, I will definitely find. My, I, I am look, definitely looking forward to a lot of these. Yeah, I am games. too. It's, oh, it's, it's hard. It's hard to say which conference actually dominated the floor this year. Good. Yeah, it's we like know which I mean, ones I, didn't. we know which one. Yeah, did. I mean, that's like you know. I mean, I agree with BJ. I mean, it's like you know, it, it was not. It, it was not. It was not Nintendo's best conference, but it was by no means bad either. Like people are. I yeah, I mean, I'm hearing people just saying like it was just atrocious and everything, just because oh, it, it started was not so bad. strong it, it wasn't and then bad. it became shit at the end. And it's like it was not bad. No, people were just, people were just saying that the Nintendo compared, digital event was bad. 
because of the fact that there was like so many games that people were pissed off about. It's like, oh, we didn't get an actual Metroid not game. Just, we got not this. Just that. Just, not just that. Just just because last year's event was so, was a lot better, that doesn't mean that this one was bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I guess in a way, I. I mean, this, and this is just and this is just my theory. I I could be incredibly wrong, but I think I know last year's digital event, they did have something Smash Brothers related, and now this year they just had their own direct, just for Smash Brothers, and they didn't have anything else with that during the digital with the uh the, this year's digital event. So, I don't that I don't know. I mean, obviously last year Super Smash Brothers and the re- and the three character reveals that they showed during last year's event that was probably one of the biggest things of hype that ever occurred in there. So I I, I don't know. I guess that may be par- partially a reason why they didn't think this digital event was up to par because un- because unlike last year, you know they uh, they decided to c- divide both uh, Smash Brothers and the event the digital event itself. I guess I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but it's like, e- but either way, it was like, you know, just going back to what I was originally saying, Nintendo's conference was by no means bad, a little underwhelming, sure, but by no means bad, and I have to agree with BJ, I think out of all the conferences, the one that I probably did get the most excited about was the Sony conference. Yeah, same here. So, yeah, I think I think it's kind of safe to say, you know... Yeah, Sony, I, I guess if we could declare a winner as how everybody loves to do when it comes to E3. I, mean, I guess based yeah, on I our guess, personal preference. I think preference, Sony won this year. Yeah, based on our personal preference. Yeah, it was Sony. Yeah. Which, which, which honestly, now, it's like now I'm actually now I'm actually thinking about probably investing into a PlayStation 4 sometime in the future. Oh, I intend to get a PlayStation 4. I, it's just right now the PlayStation to. 4 doesn't have anything that I want. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, You're know, right. I mean, it's pretty much, the, it, yep. I, you know, I, I'm approaching it the exact same way like I did with the Wii U. It's like, I knew I was going to get one, but I was going to wait until it would start putting out shit that I wanted. Seems it's like, then I'll put right. the money down for it, and hopefully by then, maybe I'll have, like, you know, maybe like a, you know, like a $20 price drop or something. <laughs> $20 price drop. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, here's hoping. I mean, I know I'm going to have to invest in one sooner or later as well, so we'll see what happens. All right, so I guess like um, any other final thoughts on E three as a whole? Meh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch half of it, so like, I'm, I, I I missed mean, out on some of it just due to bullshit. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. But although I did rewatch, I did uh, went back and watch um, the other conferences that I missed because I know uh, due to work I missed Bethesda. And Microsoft and EA. Yeah, based on the Nintendo conference, like that, because that was the one I just missed as a whole, and I missed some of Square Enix too. But as a whole, I flat out missed Nintendo. So the only information I got regarding um, all the stuff that happened during the Nintendo conference was through Twitter. So that was pretty much all the information I got. I, I never had a chance to actually go back and rewatch it all. So. Yeah through, yeah, through Twitter, watching myself, Ryan and Lindsay just scre- screaming out. Oh Ryan no! Well, no, that, that, no, that's not what I mean. But <laughs> well, thanks for putting that out there. <laughs> I still think I, I still think the biggest mistake of all of all these companies, like each of these companies so far, have, have announced at least one game that that, that 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 can involve personal creativity. Like you know, like with Nintendo, we have Mario Maker. We have. With Sony, they announced Dreams. I think Microsoft announced something. I think Minecraft later. I'm not sure. Regardless, you know these companies want us to all be creative. Suddenly, you see you see off in the distance, dicks. dicks. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, what the fuck is this? Anyway. Oh, God. Yeah, with Super Mario Maker. Yeah, yeah. Like I said on Twitter, now everyone's gonna be drawing dicks. God damn it. How sad is that? How sad is it that we're just so used to that? That's literally our first, like both myself, Ryan, and Lindsay. That was the first fucking thing we each wrote when those game when, when those games were announced on Twitter. Look at all the dicks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of all the brawl, man. It's like playing Super Smash Brothers brawl and then going through all these custom stages, and it's like, God damn it! They're God. They are make they're making these platforms and turning them into dicks. Or other inappropriate shit. I'm like, ah, fucking hell. Uh, uh, yeah, let's. 
So I, I think we should go ahead and just end this off. Yeah, because it's like we're kind of rambling at this okay, point. Okay, okay. So, I, guess, I, I, guess, I guess in the comments as we end this off, what did you guys think about this year's E3? Like, is there anything that you guys are excited for that we possibly weren't that excited for? Or anything that you wish that they would have announced that they didn't? Like, leave your thoughts. Share or, your thoughts with us. Or anything, or anything that we forgot to or maybe just didn't feel like talking about because we, we didn't Yeah, share your it. thoughts with us in the comments below. Oh, wait, 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 I almost forgot, we, 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 we didn't talk about Unrivaled. Uh, oh, yeah, oh my god, yeah, who, during who the... Remembers, who, who remembers that, 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 that sweet, that, that nervous sweetheart, of, that nervous sweetheart of the guy who, brought, who, who made his OC, the yarn guy, into, into a little character, and was so nervous on stage, but we, but, like, but everyone just loves him now. He's just a sweetheart. I, I do. <laughs> it's like, we have Yoshi, okay, all right, Nintendo has Yoshi's Rolling World, uh, EA, or whoever, or whatever company they show this on, they have Unravel. Yes, I, I actually will be planning to get on Ravel. Ah, man, yeah, I, yeah. Whenever that moment comes, and I end up, and I do end up getting a PlayStation Four, oh, I will definitely try the hell out of that game. Yeah, a game which case now, now we can end it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see you all next time. All right. See you. See you guys next time in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, and we hope you all have a wonderful day.